able to shape this relevance in a particular direction. For us to be able to have a clear sight in terms of what we invest in and what we do for translation, for societal impact, and for economic impact. So, we know about Kodak. What we see today is a landscape that is evolving rapidly. In the last three years in particular, in the last 10 years in general, we see big changes in the global landscape. Globalization is something we talk about, but more importantly, more importantly, global issues. Global issues have come to the fore, and if we do not address them, it will haunt us. When I was asked what drives Singapore, what drives Singapore's scientific agenda, I say, and this I shared just recently, uh, just, just now with the glory, there are two perspectives that Singapore sees which drives our scientific agenda. One, which is very, very close to our hearts and very, very real to us, is our industry landscape. And the industry landscape that we build for ourselves. That has got a direct impact to economic growth, direct impact to the GDP growth of Singapore and hence the well-being of our economy and our people. But coupled with that, and very importantly, is our perspective of global issues and how those issues are reflected to Singapore and help us shape our national challenges. For example, global warming. Global warming is something that we have to address. But if you view it from Singapore's perspective, our investment in R&D and our resources that we can put to work is very limited. And as such, we have to be sharper in terms of how we are going to make an impact. So when we reflect it to Singapore, we take a certain perspective, the carbon footprint for example. The carbon footprint in Singapore is relatively large compared to our small nation. And that is because of the oil and gas industry that we have. Now, how are we going to address that? And we need to address that. Right? So if you look at that, then obviously we need to be concerned about energy. But as Singapore, we cannot view it from the supply side of the equation. Because Singapore as a nation has got no alternative source of energy. We have got no access to wind. We have no access to geothermal. We have no access to tidal. We have no access to wave energy. Access to them is around the corner, but what we can extract is minimal. So our perspective must be to view this from the demand side, which is quite interesting when we actually share this perspective with your colleagues from other countries, from California for example, or from Japan, when their perspective is from a slightly different angle. But collectively, if we work together, we would surely address this in a much more holistic manner. So, Global issues reflect us in Singapore and hence evolve as our national challenges and the Singapore industry landscape and the landscape available drive our scientific agenda. So we are part of the global environment, global issues matters to us and as we work on global issues, we need to work in a globalized fashion with our global partners. And you find that this is so not only for national challenges or global challenges but also for partnerships with companies. Partners and companies, com part companies and partners tells us that they have to capitalize on the wealth of talent all over the world rather than in singular sites. And one of these key things that drives behaviors in this direction is because of the cost of research. They say big research is now so costly that you need a partnership between the governments, the agencies, and the public sector, the private sector. So public-private partnerships is becoming the norm. But public-private public -private partnerships in multinational forms is also becoming the form, the norm. So you'll find ASTAR working with, for example, the New Zealand government, and together partnering a company like Fonterra or Nestle to do research together. So you have a Swiss company, a New Zealand company, you know, an Australian, uh, the New Zealand government and the Singapore Agency for Science, Technology and Research working together to move forward ideas that could benefit the people and can be translated 
through private companies for sale to the common to, to consumers. But what is very clear for us in terms of what we do in Singapore is the line of sight of what we do for economic impact and for societal impact. So as we reflect on what we do, making science relevant the traditional way had been in a very serial form. We used as young people when I was doing my research, have an idea, work on a research problem, and then protect it, and then look for partnerships for commercialization in a very serial uh, 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 norm. You know, when I was doing my research, the first thing I was asked to do uh, as a young man during my final year project was to chart the fields around a magnet, you know. And for the life of me, I couldn't understand how relevant it's going to be for industry. But when I was doing the first end stages of my PhD, when I was doing most of my research at the Rutherford Appleton Atomic Energy Research Labs near Oxford, the work that I did resulted in a model which I had to use for designing the magnets that is going to, into the CERN accelerator. So that is the translation from a very basic piece of work to an application which has got tremendous impact. Uh, that is done in a very, very serious, uh, uh, serial form, one stage after another. Today, when I look at some of the work that you know, the CERN is, uh, uh, facility is doing and what they are doing in partnership uh, with the different entities around the world, it is much more in a collaborative, cooperative form with a multiplicity which brings a lot of dimensions together, which shortens the line of sight to translation basic science to what we see out there. So today, a new paradigm is emerging, and this emergence is because of this, what I call the quickening of the clock speed. The clock speed is now faster. This is being driven by the different digital technologies we see today, the rapid sharing of information, the shrinking of the world, the ability for us to actually collaborate in is asynchronous time and space, we can work together despite not being together. So what we do is to bring people together from the various food parts of the food chain and be able to drive a directional research which sees technology readiness translated out much, much quicker. As an example, we know we work with Procter & Gamble. All of you know Procter & Gamble because I would bet that 99% of you would use the shampoo. If you don't use the shampoo, you use the washing powder. If you don't use the washing powder, the ladies will probably use the cosmetics. You know, they own the label SK2. They own the label Oil of Ule, right? But they have got to continue to innovate. They are interested, for example, in active antibacterial surfaces, for example. They are interested in a lot of new science, right? You know, why? Because they see tremendous needs out there because they are very close to the markets, right? We, on the other hand, work on some of fundamental sciences. We work on surfaces, we work on nanotechnology, we work on nanoparticles, right? Uh, we work on understanding pathogens. We look at the genomics of viruses, right? Now, how do you translate what we do here out to something which will bring healthier lifestyle for people, get the ladies to be prettier, get the men to be younger, right? Get the bald-headed men to have more hair, right? <laughs> so, the key is a partnership, right from the very beginning, identifying and protecting new technologies with various partners all together, you know, right from the very start. So we go into common road mapping uh, workshops. We just finished a common work, uh, a workshop program with uh, Procter & Gamble, and uh, there's one ongoing now with Nestle. And what are we doing with Nestle? We're talking of neutral therapeutics. You know, diabetes is a problem that is becoming very, very big in Asia because of our changing lifestyle and our changing dietary uh, habits. Right? So rather than taking medication, rather than taking uh, uh, injections that you have to uh, to, uh, to, to you know, putting a, a shrink into your body once every uh, day or twice every day, it might be 
interesting to be able to take this medication in a form of a nutrition that you have to imbibe. For example, a drink, right? Or, uh, as Nestle produces, maybe a block of ice creams. That would be very, very appealing to many people. So, neutral therapeutics is 